yellow mustard. It's the only thing for wieners and sausages. It's like Clint Eastwood said, nobody but nobody puts ketchup on a hot dog. Shamrock Creek. Oh, we got a little bit of clear weather here, other than a, some nice cold wind. Uh, so I'm going to cook up some lunch before I dig a hole for Dishy. Bavarian meats, Seattle style. Looks like cream cheese, bacon, and jalapeno. All right. Oh yeah, those are damn fine. Bavarian Meats makes those. You're gonna have to get some more of those. I think they're from Costco. Mm. Got a nice snap to them. You can really taste the cream cheese and the jalapeno. Mm. But it's not super spicy, which is good. All right, back to work. So I'm gonna use some super meaty wire from the charge controller through its fuse down to the bus. Uh, it probably doesn't need to gauge um, for the distance it's at, but I have enough of it and it can't hurt. It is the highest amperage section uh, with the exception of the connection from the bus bar on the positive and negative through the shunt down to the batteries. That will certainly be the highest amperage, but uh, I did the math and the two is good for that. So we'll just use two all the way up to this thing and everything else I'll probably just use six on. So got to get out all the special tools for crimping on some giant copper lugs onto these things because they're huge. This is the coolest thing ever. Uh, I have one of these at home as well. Uh, I bought one for here just because if you're working on anything battery related or DC power related, you're going to be putting big copper lugs on. Uh, this thing will do from 8 gauge all the way up to like double op. So uh, it's just a big crimper and you got long bars for good leverage. So if you're doing a lot of DC wiring, you definitely need one of these because if you're doing it with just a little small hand tool, you're hurting yourself for no reason. Uh, these aren't very much money. Just snag one at Amazon or your favorite sh your favorite store. Copper wire lug kit. Same here. It's also got heat shrink in it. I have another box of heat shrink. I'm super anal. I heat shrink everything. On these, when you put the copper lugs on, the whole copper thing is exposed anyways. So the connection to the wire, it's not like there's really any way you can prevent it from accidentally shorting out but it looks really clean when you heat shrink across from the jacket of the wire onto the lug itself. Uh, plus it, you know, a little bit more secure, not hugely, but uh, I just like the way it looks. It looks more professionally done. So I heat shrink everything, um, not just to protect things that might short out, but also just to make them look better. So heat shrink super cheap. And I do have a cordless DeWalt heat gun now I got at uh, the auction. So it runs on the same 20 volt max system I have, and uh, now I don't have to run the generator to run my heat gun. So that's pretty cool too. We'll get to try that out. And some big giant choppers. Uh, these are excellent for cutting that really heavy cable. Uh, you can use the little dikes, but man, you got to gnaw your way through. These do a nice clean cut, uh, especially on the two gauge and bigger. Uh, I've had to use bigger than two gauge, like when I was working on the Jeep, and man, that's some heavy duty stuff to cut through. Uh, and then I just use the little guys to trim off the jacket. So we're going to go from the, on the negative side, we're going to go from the shunt up to its bus bar. We won't go to the batteries yet because they're not here. I'm not even going to run that wire. And that'll actually be a super short run because as you can see, they're pretty close together. Like butter. If you're doing these projects, I always have like tons of these lug kits around because you'll never have the size you need. It's just. <laughs> they give you just a few of each type, so I just have tons of them. I need to actually sort them all in a nice container. Now you always want to make sure the heat shrink is on there, but since I haven't put this end on yet, I can slide it on the other way, so the worst is forgetting to put the heat shrink on. 
Perfect. Best tool ever. And we'll use the heat shrink. Cordless heat gun. Cool. Much better. Looks so much more professional. Excellent. Let's put the other end off. Gotta put the heat shrink on first because you can't get it over the other end. How pro is that? I'm not even a professional, but I can look like one. All right, that gets us from the shunt to the bus. Let's get that hooked up. Shunt away. All right, now we'll run the negative up to the controller. This actually has a terminal where you just put the bare wires in and clamp it down inside the unit itself, so we only have to put an end on for the bus. Super wins. Okay, we're gonna run the positive out of this unit into its fuse since it's just a little hot there. Uh, we'll only need a lug on this end and then bare wires on the other end. Positive down to the fuse. Uh, now we're gonna run this fuse down to its switch and then to its bus, and that will get the solar charger wired. Definitely want to make sure that uh, positive and, and negative, especially positive connections, are tight. Don't over tighten them and break things, but you need to make sure they're tight. If they're not, they arc. Uh, and arcing is not good for anything, and uh, will corrode things as well. So. Always check your connections. So we got the solar controller wired. We came out of here through the fuse, down to the switch, into the bus for the positive. The negative comes, we got the shunt wired to the bus, bus to this. So this guy is wired. Uh, I need to screw this switch down, and he's pretty much ready as far as we can go today. Uh, and then next I can do DC converter and the inverter if I would like. All right, let's do the inverter. So we will go bus, diffuse, to inverter. It has a switch on it already, so I'm not going to put an interrupt into it. Uh, we can pull the fuse if we have to, so I'm actually going to move this fuse to here, make it a little easier to wrap. This wire is actually too fat for my comfort to fit into that plug. It's just big enough that some stray strands can come out. And what I don't want is anything shorting across that. So I'm actually going to look at the manual really quick and see what the recommended wire gauge range is. Uh, I may step this down to a smaller gauge from here to here. This one's fine, won't hurt anything, but I'm going to check that right now. Okay, I redid all the math. Checked in the manual, so the minimum wire gauge, or the re sorry, the recommended wire gauge for the distance I'm going, which is insanely short, is 10 millimeter squared, which is little. It's like seven gauge, so I'll just go a little bit larger, which will be six gauge, which is good to 65 amps anyway. So that exceeds the fuse we put in. So we will go with the six gauge here. Perfect. So it's starting to get a little dark. Uh, it looks light, the video looks really good, but uh, it's getting hard to see, so I don't have any extra like, light in here, and I've been working on stuff all day, so I think it's about time to wrap it up, maybe have a beer. So phase one of the about 5,000 watt solar wind turbine combo uh, is almost wrapped up, so I'm gonna wrap up this video, and we'll start the next one with uh, finishing some wiring. Hopefully by then we'll have batteries and or uh, the solar panels to start working on. It's a great start. I'm super excited. I'm having a great time doing this. Uh, 
Hopefully next time we'll be able to finish wiring this and then get the solar panels in and the batteries in and be able to turn it all on. Well, we got a lot done today. I'm gonna sit here and enjoy this Pilsner around this little toasty burn barrel. Decided not to build a fire in the fire pit since we're just waiting for the excavator to level that area so we can get the cover put over it uh, this winter. So figured I would just stay warm by the burn barrel. But anyways, I'm gonna enjoy a couple beers and then uh, head out and we'll see you tomorrow. You have to watch me eat. And there's no work getting done. <laughs>